This week I put out a new Max for Live device called Gradient, and this video will look at some of its features and some of the ways you can use it in your own projects. So Gradient is a preset interpolator, meaning it can collect all of the values of all the parameters in the device, and it lets you shift those all at once towards a different set of values that you've stored. So to see that, I'm going to set Gradient to work with the auto pan I have on this track. And when I do that, it automatically captures all of the current settings. Now, I can go through and change some of these values and store this new preset in any of Gradient's banks. Once it's stored, I get a new hue, and the colors in the interface are derived from the settings that make up the presets I've stored there. So this darker blue represents our original settings, and the aqua represents our new settings. Now, just as the colors sort of blend into one another, our presets can also blend or morph between each other as we slide in the interface. And we get all these new ideas and new configurations as we look between the presets that we've stored. And that's a process that we can sort of just carry on with. I can change these values again and get something different. And if I store this in another bank, then we get another color representing another preset that we can now interpolate between all three different settings that we have here. And if we go about it this way and are just randomly setting things, it's kind of useful to have this mutate function which just lets me say I want it to be about 7% different, and the values will change by about that much. That lets me, once again, store, which I can toggle this bank or hold shift as a shortcut. And now I've stored this slightly randomized version, which I can scale back if it's gone too far. And that flexibility is great if you want to go a little more extreme. Say, I want the current settings to be 66% different. Well, now we get a very different preset, and if I store this one as well, then I can scale it back to something safer if I liked this original preset. So in some cases, you may not want all of the parameters to be affected this way. Say I want my rate to be 3.3 hertz, and I don't want that to change. I can open up the selective group and add these parameters that I don't want to have affected, and they'll be ignored by Gradient's mutate and interpolation functions. So if maybe I want the waveform to be a sine wave. Maybe I want the amount to stay around 50. Those won't be affected as I interpolate through the rest of the parameters, and I can lock in the ideas I want. On the other hand, maybe I only want a few parameters to be affected. And that's where this solo toggle comes into play. Uh, only the parameters that I've added to the selective group will now be affected by gradients functions, functions, where the other ones are ignored. So it's sort of the opposite of that exclusion function. And that can be handy if you want to just hone in on a couple areas of your patch or lock in some ideas that you've already had. Now I want to switch over to some audio examples to give you a sense of what the results of this process really sound like. I have a basic analog patch pulled up. And if I set analog as the device focus in Gradient, it gives us access to all of those same functions we were looking at with AutoPan. So we can quickly change all the parameters and randomize them. But the results here are going to be a little hit or miss. And I've found the best way to go about setting all of the parameters at once in a logical way is simply by loading in a preset, just as you would uh, when you're starting to find a sound to begin with. So I'm going to look for a preset, maybe this one. And I can now capture all of those parameter settings into one of Gradient's banks. And when I do that, we can now shift between our original settings 
and these new ones and look for what's in between. And none of the presets I find in the middle here are exactly like the presets that I've input. They're new ideas that I can find inspiration in for my next track. I can carry on with this process and add in another preset. That one seems fine. And if I once again save this to one of Gradient's banks, now I can freely move between this new sound and our original. And get some ideas for new sounds that pull from all of them, but aren't any of them. These are completely original patches. I'll go ahead and add a, another preset. Maybe this time from the pad category. That one's pretty interesting, so I'll load it in. And again, I can capture all of the settings in that preset by storing it in one of Gradient's banks. But what we find right away is one of the things that happens here, this new preset changes the semitone parameter. So we'll actually go out of key as we move between. And that's a pretty clear sign that we don't want the semitones to interpolate. So that's what the selective group is so great for. I can just add the semitones parameter. And now this won't be affected as I move between, so I can keep in key as I explore the new presets inside. Now if I really like something in the middle, one thing I like to do is to recollect this new preset as one of my banked presets. What that allows me to do is refine the area and look with finer detail between that point we drew it from and the rest of the presets. For instance, maybe that's as strong as I'd like to go. And anything past there is a little extreme and not exactly useful to me. Well, maybe I'll rebank this as well. And now I only have useful material in the middle, ideally. And the other great thing that happens out of this process is while there are so many distinct presets and device configurations inside of Gradient, all of the neighbors of any individual point is minutely different than the one beside it. So if I just want some variety, maybe changing from a verse sound to a chorus sound, I know there'll be something related nearby and it shifts logically towards whatever preset is stored in that corner. So finally, I want to look at how Gradient works with third-party plugins. So the only thing you need to keep in mind is the parameters you want to have affected by Gradient must be included in the device configuration. 
Otherwise, it works just like what we were looking at before. And just like with the analog patch, I like to set my initial banks with a preset I like from the synth that just makes everything go a little bit quicker and lets me define sort of the direction that I want the interpolated presets to go in. So I'll look for a new preset. That one's not really different enough. Let's see. That one's quite different, but we'll go ahead and try it. I'll store the preset in one of Gradient's banks. And we can look between those. No, oh, there are so many ideas already, just from these two presets. I really like that one. And I like it so much, I might even just store it to a different bank. And when I do that, I can sort of fine tune. And it sort of generates new presets that are like that one but have their own identity. I'm gonna look for something very different now. And that should add some new flavor, so I'm going to bank this to gradient. And we're getting some pitch-based problems, I would say. What needs to happen is one of these parameters that is influencing the pitch of the different oscillators is going in and out of harmony, and we want it to stay locked in. So all I'll need to do is to grab it and add it to our exclusion list. Maybe it's this one that goes a little bit out. Now we should get more consistent results, hopefully. And again, all of this is coming from just, well, three presets and then one that was made by Gradient. This is one. This is another. The newest one. And the one we found in the middle. Gradient is almost like a rabbit hole or if you turn a camera on its own monitor and you get the infinity mirror effect, it almost creates a, a r endless rabbit hole to go down. So I'll just look for a few more ideas and see how those will influence our patch. I'll put this in one of the banks.
seems to hit a sweet spot around there. I might also rebank that. And comb in finer detail the space between there. It sounds like there's another another oscillator going out of pitch in some way. But it almost sounds good. So that's Gradient. It's this tool for seeking out sounds and device configurations that's really all about exploration and getting the most out of the devices and presets in your library. You can download it at the link in the description if you want to check it out. And be sure to follow something patches related to hear about the next devices I'll be working on.